This is a special supplementary transmission from Rescue Shuttle Control. As you're working on your three color LED project, it's come to our attention that a small number of our rescue shuttles may actually be equipped with a non standard version of the three color LED. If that's the case, your circuit may not function as intended. So we have some additional discussion and instructions for you in the event that you're one of the small number of affected shuttles. So in order to discuss this problem, if it applies to you, let's review what the intended setup of our circuit is. As we look at uh, the circuit that we have illustrated here, this is equipped with one of the standard LEDs. As you'll recall, the long lead of the LED, that's the one that's indicated right here, connected to the ground connection. This long one is the negative lead of the LED. This would be connected to zero volts or to ground. And then each of the three other leads of the LED, the red, the green, and the blue channels, would each be connected to positive 5 volts, uh, of course, through a current limiting resistor in each case. Now, this is the expected configuration. And if your LED is of this standard type, this should work for you. For example, when the red channel attached to pin 11 here is at high volts, then current flows through the resistor into the positive lead corresponding to red and then returns back to ground through the common lead of the LED. The non-standard LEDs, which a few shuttles have been equipped with, are reversed. That is, the common lead is actually the positive lead of those LEDs. And so no light will be produced unless current flows in positive through that common lead and out through each of the now negative leads of the LED. In order to make your circuit function, if you have one of these types of LEDs, it will be necessary to modify both your circuit and corresponding software in your code. So we're now going to discuss the modifications that are necessary in order to get your circuit to function, assuming that you're one of the uh, affected rescue shuttles. What we need to do is we need to reverse the direction of current flowing so that it's flowing in through the common lead and out through each of the red, green, and blue uh, secondary leads. In order to do that, we're going to modify the circuit as shown here. What you can see now is that the common lead, the long lead of the LED, is now no longer connected to ground. You'll see that it's connected to this bus right here, which in turn is connected to a steady plus 5 volts on the hero. So what that means now is that a current will flow from this plus 5 volts into the common lead of the LED and then hopefully out back to 0 volts or back to ground. Now we have a problem in that regard and that is that these pulse width modulated outputs, in our case we're using pins 9, 10, and 11, do not produce a ground unless they're off. And normally they would produce a plus 5 volts when they're on. So we're going to need to change the function a little bit. We will indeed have current flow in through the common and out through, say, the red when the voltage at this is zero, when it's low. Uh, and the same would be true for 10 and 9 here, for the green and the blue channels. 
But we can see now that this is just the opposite of the function that we would normally expect. Normally, we would expect that when one of these pins is on or high, we would get light. But it's just the opposite. When these are high, this will be at 5 volts, the same as the 5 volts that's being supplied to the common pin. And so there'll be no net voltage difference and no current flowing. So when these are on, the light will be off. And when these are off, then current will flow in the now opposite direction and the lights will be on. So this modification will allow the lights to be turned on and off with the desired color. But now we need to realize that there's a change necessary in the code. Normally, when the pulse width modulation causes this red channel, in this case pin 11, to be on, we would have current flowing through the red channel. But now, when this is on, that will be actually turned off. So if we want red light on, we need to turn this off. The effect is that we need to reverse the amount of time that we spend with each one of these channels being on or off in the pulse width modulation. So as an example, let's suppose that we would like to turn this LED on with a pure red color. That means that we should set the red channel to zero, and we should set the green and blue channels to their maximum duty cycle on, which would be 255. So setting red and green to 255 and red to zero would give us full intensity red. Or if we wanted, say, a half intensity, we could set the green and blue channels to 255 and red to half on, half off, which would be 128. In fact, we can change the code in order to function as we want it to by taking all of the pulse width modulation codes that we formerly used in the other circuit and replacing them with 255 minus the original value. So we can see what happens here. When we wanted, say, a pure green light on, originally we would have had 0, 128, and 0, and that would give us green on at half intensity. But if we now want to do it in this new positive common circuit, what we would need to do is keep the green on at 128, but replace the red and the blue, instead of being zero, now they would be at 255 each. So that's a simple change to the code that will be necessary in order to use this type of LED. Hopefully, if your LED is one of this type and you weren't having a successful circuit function before, this will fix it. So with that, we'll sign off the, for the time being. And remember, build everything and invent safe.